Ah, blink and you miss it, credits. People ride buses to plays near and far. To plays near and far, Broadway and touring companies. Bus ride. Bus station, we must first buy a ticket. From a bank teller? George and his father are buying their tickets. I guess that's a complete thought. Boy, all three of these people can't wait for this process to be replaced with an app. They are just in time for us coming into the station. It is big and cold. That's v interesting. Mr. Fisher drives our bus. While his sister solves mysteries in Australia. This man tells us when the bus is ready. He doesn't get a name. He talks no, through the loudspeaker. Oh, good. Two voices Seven glitching out. Coach for Somerville, Easton, Harrisburg, Bedford. I Pittsburgh, mean Pottersville. West. Time to go. Many people are going with us. And they'll regret it soon. The porter puts away our baggage in a space under the seats. Under the seats. Under the seats. Mr. Fisher takes George's ticket. And checks it against George's fake ID. Inside, the passengers are finding their seats. Finding them to be subpar, I mean. George likes to sit in front. So he can watch the driver. Leeringly. Before Mr. Fisher starts the bus, he closes the door. A lesson he learned the, the hard way. Then he backs the bus away. Into a semi. Out of the station we go. And on our way. All right, first person to sing wheels on the bus gets chucked out the window. Right on time, too. This is a fantasy. Mr. Fisher drives carefully in crowded city streets, watching out for cars and people. But Ralph Crampton in front of him doesn't care. He switches a signal, a signal to warn drivers behind him that he wants to make a turn. There is a signal, turn, turn, turn. One last look at the tall buildings as we leave the city behind. It's quaint to see a film from before traffic was invented. Soon we are out on the open highway. A highway that is like a river. Highways, the ever-flowing river. Welcome to Jurassic Cars, Parking. Buses and trucks roll over it day and night. And it just has to take it. Hey, son, I never loved you. George likes to see the big trucks. He likes like big trucks and he cannot lie. All kinds of goods to factories and stores. And with no lines dividing traffic, we may be seeing one of those trucks up close and personal Mr. soon. Fisher keeps his eyes on the road. Watching the road and the other cars all the time. I'm watching you, road and cars. Always watching. A traffic light stops us. Oh, you're going to let a traffic light stop you, you sheep? We will lose a minute or two here, and Mr. Fisher has to keep track of the time. He loses another minute just pulling out the watch. 956. He's still on schedule. The lightning won't strike the clock tower for eight more minutes. But now the stoplight is changing to go. That ruins everything! He shifts gear. His new strategy is to ditch the road and drive through the field. He moves ahead quickly. He still has many miles of driving to do. Okay, Robert Frost. He knows just how fast to go on each part of the road. But he's stuck he behind this slowpoke. And to drive safely. Look, Dr. Maldor's robot now truck. Watch this driver coming out of a side road. Ah, that's when you were hit by the other car you didn't know was coming. Mr. Fisher has to look out for all kinds of careless drivers on the highway. Most of them are Jenners. He sees in a big mirror... Or what? ...cars coming from behind. Here comes a car past now. Beep, beep, get off the road, Frizzle! Here comes another. Yikes. And another. Mr. Fisher always drives safely and never passes another car when he can't see the road ahead. He drives safely and he stays on time? Most buses I ride now do neither. we are riding through a fine farm country. Maybe we'll find the Watson feed barn and rescue Professor Dodge. Look there. Farm boys and girls. Saying as you wish. Good luck as we roll onward. That was the only joy we'll get to experience all month. The train is coming. Thomas wants a rematch with Bertie. We need not stop for trains. Then Our why bring it up? Goes under the railroad through this underpass. So it doesn't affect us when the Billion Dollar Limited runs wild. As our bus goes on, the passengers are having a pleasant time. There's a suitcase poking me in the rib. There's an elbow in my Thomas ear. The scenery. 
others read. Couldn't actually find anyone others watching the scenery. Find napping the most pleasant way to travel. Mr. Fisher also takes a nap, and that's how the bus ended up crashing into Roadside America. Look ahead. There's a car stalled on the highway. Oh, guess that car does have ghosts. Our driver puts on the brake. But it's too little too late. And he turns out carefully. Carefully? I haven't seen wheel driver spinning that reckless since Sajak retired. Feed the birds. At last, we're coming into another city. Well, I mean, Harrisburg. The bus turns into a station much like the one from which we started. Right by the train station. That would have gotten us here faster. Here, some of the passengers are leaving. They got to get to the Harrisburg Mall to see the Bass Pro Shop and... This no, that's pretty much all that's left. Mr. Fisher, too. Yeah, get your hands off me, creep. And so George tells him goodbye. George has formed a parasocial dependency on Mr. Fisher and will instantly distrust the new driver. A new driver, Mr. Thompson, will take us on from here. Only one Thompson? Mr. The other Fisher one must be harassing Tintin on his own. Yeah, keep an eye out for this George kid. He's a real little weirdo. Everything in order? Mr. Thompson is ready to go to work. As a part-time FDR lookalike. Soon we are leaving the city on the second part of our trip. Across what is clearly the Susquehanna River, are you gonna shout it out at all? Across a broad, beautiful river. Guess they were warned not to say its name by Lou Costello. Out on the road, Mr. Thompson settles to his work. His work of obeying the honk if you're horny bumper stickers. In a little while, we reach the entrance to a great super highway. What makes it super? Was it a regular highway who got a mushroom out of a question block? On this wide superhighway... It's the Mr. Pennsylvania Thompson Turnpike. There's nothing super about it. Easily. And passengers can ride more comfortably, too. Highways make the cushions bouncier. Cars that cross this highway have to use bridges overhead, like this one. Which is too short for our bus to clear. Crash! Wide, separate lanes and well-built curves... Oh, my. ...faster... Safer driving. And immediately that other car careens down the hill into a ditch. We are nearing a mountain ridge. A store brand Mountain Dew. It is a high wall across our path. But we plunge into this tunnel. Metaphorically. And right through the mountain. Out on the other side. Into Toontown. And down the mountainside into the valley beyond. Penn and Teller's Desert Bus, the movie... A jam handy production. Now we come to a place where the bus stops to give us a short rest. A short rest where Elrond will decipher the runes on our swords. A place to stretch our legs. Are these legs lunch. actually stretching? A nice lunch room by the side of the highway. Dayhawks is a less evocative painting. While George and his father and the other passengers have lunch, Mr. Thompson makes sure that Big Motor, plenty of water and oil. Mr. Thompson will be fed scraps after work and he will like it. All right, the food poisoning should kick in at the bumpiest part of the road. In a little while, we are on our way again. This trip will never end. Passengers settle down for the last hours of the trip. There's only enough time left for eight screenings of the Irishman. A toddler is having an in-depth conversation with the woman in the seat behind him. Mile after mile goes by. Miles Mr. and miles of bus on. ride styles. Now we cross a valley. The Great Valley? The valley of steel mills and factories. I thought Billy We're Joel said they're the closing all the factories ride. down. Boy, look at all the future pollution. Mr. Thompson's work for the day is almost over. Soon he can beat himself up over not getting enough done during his downtime. The passengers get ready to leave the bus. Hats and coats go on. Grab your coat, grab your hat, leave the bus Turn in seconds down. flat. Mr. Thompson has driven another long bus trip safely and on time. Oh God, the bus is on fire! Tomorrow, he will drive back over the same road. But tonight, he sleeps in a hostel overrun with street urchins. Now it's goodbye to Mr. Thompson. And goodbye to George. And goodbye to Garbage. Let's hope we'll take a bus trip together again. 
Very George's dad clubbed the narrator before he could finish suggesting another bus ride. Well, after the creepy music abrupt ending of Crustaceans, I'm glad to be back to a creepy lack of music abrupt ending. Thanks, Britannica. Well, that's the bus driver. Even though the short was about two bus drivers, which one was the titular one? Place your bets below. I would like to thank my patrons, not only for their continued financial support, but for joining me on a Patreon livestream to brainstorm jokes for this riff. Yes, these fine folks here pulled the stop requested cord to tell me to get off at the next joke opportunity. If you would like to join the next live stream, even a $1 pledge gets you access. And at $2, you can see early looks at videos, plus bonus material, including alternate jokes from a lot of our riffs. Some of the alternate jokes might even be funnier than the ones that made it in, but they just didn't fit because shorts are... short. Now, if you'll excuse me, my shift is actually ending now, so I need to go hand all your tickets off to the next YouTuber. So until next time, this is Dave, signing off.